So last week, <laughs> we talked about um, G-Edit, um, which is a text editor, and Nano, and we also got into a little bit of VI. But we also talked about a tool called HTOP, which um, helped us to kill some programs and things like that yeah. um, last week. Tim, what are we doing this week? This week, in that similar vein of systems management, we're going to show you an even more powerful systems management tool called Webmin. Awesome. And we're going to get to that in just a moment. So Tim, you were talking about, uh, we talked about SSH and VNC yep. um, in our previous videos, mm -hmm. but you mentioned uh, um, just a, a minute ago uh, a thing called Webmin. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? So not to put VNC down, all the work that they've done for that, or even SSH, which is still a very important tool in your, in your, uh, in your shed here, but Webmin is a kind of a way to get a lot of those capabilities all built into one. It's not a remote control session, it's more like a systems management service. So you install it on your Pi, it runs on the Pi continuously, and you can connect to that service over the internet or over your local network to that interface, and from a web browser, manage a lot of aspects of your Pi. User management, service management, shares, oh directories, create directories, all kind of things, and we'll go over a lot of those. So you're, ta you're talking about things like um, password management, yep. creating multiple users, where normally you'd have to type that in, in the command line and, yep. and go through all that. You're saying that this is more of a graphical user interface to that? Point and click, baby. Oh, we love point and click. We do indeed. Make your life easier. Work smarter, not harder. Yep. Okay, so um, you wanna show us how to get it installed? Sure. So we've got a Pi here that we went ahead and took the liberty of getting all the way up to patch to the latest, made sure SSH was enabled, make sure that the username is understood, all that sort of thing, got all of our, our requirements out of, the, out of there. And I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of opening up um, Webmin itself, the main website for the project, in a web browser, in this case, Chromium. Um, and from there, you can click on um, Debian package on the left-hand side where it shows, and that'll take you to the website that's listed in the URL that you see up above here. So why why is it why is it Debian? Is there, um... Because Raspbian is based off of Debian. Oh, okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So um, oh, also notice the URL is um, um, web men.com it's not like a .org a lot of stuff yeah. that you see with raspberry pi is showing .org yeah. um, but this is actually .com don't go to .org that's something way yeah. different and i do believe they have um, su paid support and that sort of thing so they're an actual for profit company i yeah. believe but they they release these as into the repositories directly it's just in our case i'm going to go ahead and get the bleeding edge rather than go get the repository version cuz i want the latest and greatest so um, you can basically follow these instructions for the most part on your own, but we're going to actually show you how it's done. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this first command here. Get it on the clipboard. Then we'll go into our terminal. And we will paste it. So normally we do an app. Um, dash get yep. to get a package and install it onto the computer. This looks a little different. What are we doing here? We're deviating in this sense because we want bleeding edge. When we do an app get, we're getting things from the configured repositories. Another way to do this would have been to go on and added Webmin as a repository officially in the repo list. The reason I don't want to do that is I, this is a one-off activity. It's faster for the video and that sort of thing. Definitely getting it and adding it as a repository so that you can always get the latest version through, through app get update, that sort of thing, is also valid as well. 
Um, this just seemed like a faster okay. way for us. To so do this it. actually, it takes a package and puts it on your computer. Yep. And then you can then explode it and install it. Yep. And then if there's dependencies or things like that, you still might have to go to the repos and get those dependencies. But for our purposes, this is pretty straightforward. Sweet. All right, let's see so what So the wget merely does nothing but get the actual Debian package. You see it downloading there right now. There you go. So webman 1.870 yep. all that deb. Yep. And then once that's saved, then we run the next command, which is a simple dpackage instead of apt. And the reason for that is because we're again not working with repositories, we're working with a specific Debian package. And we'll go ahead and put that command in. And oh, look, we get an error. What is what requested operation requires super user privileges. Yes. We learned about this, didn't we? Yes, we did. So we fixed this with sudo and then we paste it again. And we're off to the now races. Now we're getting it. So um, even Tim has been working with Linux for a very, very long time. And we still get caught up. I mean, I do it at work every now and then. I get caught up in um, not putting sudo in front of it or sudo in, in, in front of the command. And I always get these errors. I'm like, what happened? Oh. Uh, miss so that. It, if it happens to you, it's going to happen to you. It will never not happen to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even after you've been doing it for it's years. It's fine. It's fine. It's and um, I really mainly wanted to do it to show you that getting that package didn't require any special privileges. Copying a file from the internet doesn't really require anything. But Linux is smart enough to know, hey, what you're fixing to do is change my system configuration instead of just messing up my own home folder. This is something I'm doing to the system that could affect other users or the whole system. For that you need to elevate your privilege. So have you guys um, used the, um, have y'all guys used any of the tools that are built into the Raspberry Pi to uh, add new users or anything like that yet? Um, if so, we'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below. Yeah. Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that you know, bell. Hit the bell. Um, and you know, we'd love to hear from you. Okay, now this is the other thing I wanted to show you. It's saying unmet dependency problems, and it depends on a bunch of other packages and says those are not installed. So again, another example where even though we're bypassing package management, the package manager understands, hey, this package, when I look at it, needs these extra things in order for it to function. It's asking for this capability, mm -hmm. and I don't have that. Fortunately for us, right down below here, it says if Debian complains about missing dependencies, it's a simple matter to grab all these dependencies in one go around, and we don't have to do them individually. We can do them all in one pass. Separated by a space, right? Yep, space limited list. <clears throat> so we'll do sudo again. Hey, and, you remembered. Yeah, and we'll paste and enter. So if you if you take a look at this line, guys, you'll see the app dash get install Perl, libnet, and everything just separated by a space. You can do that. So if you have a bunch of packages you want to install, mm -hmm. You just put them in a line like that, hit go, and Bob drunk. Now, again, the package manager is showing us that we bypassed the process by saying, hey, you had a broken install that was set up before. Did you really mean to do that? In our case, we did because I wanted to show you, you can get packages, but it gets complicated when you do packages outside of package management. But sometimes you still need to do it that way. So you did an apt get, uh, or I'm sorry, sudo apt f uh, dash dash fix broken install. Yes, because so I tried to install webmin, install. Okay. didn't like it because I had unmet dependencies. Tried to install the dependencies, but I hadn't fixed the original setup first. Okay. And because of that, it wouldn't let me continue. So this just kind of goes back in the process and kind of links everything back, creates yep. all the links. and. It's almost like making the, deep, the Debian file back into a packaged managed version. Okay. You could think of it almost kind of that way. And this takes a moment because the Pi has a little bit of time to think about going through and doing things. Again, this is not going to be the fastest computer on the block. It's not a $2,000 hot rod. Yeah, it's a $30 piece of equipment. Exactly, but, which outperforms a Yugo for sure. So it's worth the money, <laughs> but it's not a hot rod. That's funny. Yep. So yeah. unfortunately, yeah. this is where you're going to wait just a little while.
So, all right. So we got it. We got it downloaded. Finally or is finished. It installed. No, it's actually installed. Okay. So now it tells us at the very end, webmin installs complete. You can now log in to this address, right? As root with your root password or as any user who can sudo. Now, this is where you'll probably leave a lot of people, right? And understanding the difference in that we are not going to run anything as root, nor we're we going to generally recommend you do unless you absolutely have no other choices because it is not safe mm -hmm. to, in general, run and live as root doing things that on any correct. computer. Try never to do that. Yeah, if you can help it. Now, sometimes you don't have a choice. Yeah, you got to. But. Um, but for us, we don't have to worry about that because fortunately the Pi user can run sudo. As you saw, we ran the sudo commands earlier directly. So it looks like we're connecting to an HTTPS and not an HTTP site. Yes. Okay. And the reason for that is these guys, like a lot of other people on the net now, think there's no legitimate reason to ever not connect over a secured channel for communications. There's no reason for HTTP to exist anymore because HTTPS is free to implement. That's something that we'll definitely cover in later videos if you're ever going to make your own websites and secure your own sites. So let's go there. If I can type. Okay. okay. Now, so you're going to get this error message because you don't normal. have certificates, right? Well, Chromium doesn't trust the cert that was just presented, right. basically, because it's a self-signed certificate. So for us, we know we're okay. So we're going to go ahead and say advanced, and we're going to go ahead and say proceed. And of course, they make it as easy as possible to back out of that because they want to make sure you don't make a bad decision if you don't know where you're going. If you get this dialogue in other places and at other times, pay careful attention. And oh. then for us, we know what the default username and password is going to be. John, do you know? Do I? No, I don't know, Tim. Tell you me. You don't know? Well, since this is a freshly set up Pi with minimal changes, it's uh, going to be Pi and, and raspberry. raspberry. And if you've been following along in a series, we've actually reset the Pi um, uh, to clean things up. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's why we're back to our normal password. Never leave your Pi as... Pi and Raspberry because everybody knows that username and password. Agreed. But I wanted to keep this simple, you know, for Absolutely. the purposes of, of showing. And this is where it gets kind of cool. So with this interface, it's can you make that bigger? Um, I can. Give it a second. There we go. One more time. A little bit bigger. I think that's as good as we're going to get and still be able to fit everything on it. Now, Right off the bat, before you even ever had a chance to click on anything, you're getting some of the coolness factor immediately. You've got your gauges right at the top that are telling you both CPU, local memory, virtual memory, and uh, local space, wow. which is really, really cool to be able to see all that in one view relatively easily. You also get a whole lot of system information about what you're running. You get more specifics and very serious granular details, the kernel you're running, how long the system's been up, bunch of other factors. So a lot of that data is really can be useful later to find out like how long has it been since I've had a power outage. That can your Pi sometimes is the only thing that hasn't been rebooted in a long time. It's for example, you that. if you've had if you set your Pi up to be a security camera, you're gonna to want to know that. You're definitely you're gonna, you're gonna to want that. to know if you if yeah. somebody shut the power off to that thing or so not. So it's pretty nice to have that right up front and you know front page without having to click on anything. But then we've got a whole lot of other areas that we can go into that we can click on and it, it's just the options here are just mind boggling. So we're not going to go over every little detail, but there's a lot of things that you can do. This all has to do specifically with webmin. Web so for example, one of the things you might do in here is webmin users where you can grant somebody just the ability to get to webmin. So for example, they themselves could also see the uptime or something along yeah. those lines, right? Mm -hmm. But then we also have the system itself and we can control all kinds of aspects from here. So some of the things that can be kind of interesting is see the running processes. Mm -hmm. For example, we can schedule timed jobs, things to run on a certain schedule, things like that. Um, look at documentation, look at system logs, who tried to log in, did they? how many times did they try, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
individual users. For example, we talked about not having to type in yeah. create a user. This is this is actually not a simple thing to do in in the command line if you're not familiar with Linux, right? Yep. But this just makes it yep. point and click, as yeah. Tim said earlier. Yep. And you can create a new user right up here at the top with a button and fill in all the relevant details and create a user right there from that spot. So there's a lot of power right here, changing passwords, you name it. And then we've got servers. So say for example, you're doing web development and you wanna use your Pi as a place to do that. It can definitely serve that need. Mm -hmm. um, you can go in here and add a server to it. And when you drop that down, once it's added, it'll add that module and it'll see that that server's there and you can configure it. Make other pages, things like that for yourself or structures. Um, and then we've got things like networking, we've got things like hardware, we can monitor bandwidth used, things like that to see. For example, that security camera that you mentioned yeah. before, it can be sometimes helpful to see how much traffic has passed across that Pi. Yeah. Um, and then we've got everything like hardware. Now, um, this covers you know some of the core basic stuff, but there are other modules that can also be brought in. Um, you notice even that they've got some mention of clustering in here. and. Clustering is something that's a pretty advanced topic on the Pi that we'll cover someday. And uh, But it's needless to say, put several Pis together and make them do heavy lifting for you, even nice. beyond what you'd think they could do. And then there's a bunch of unused modules. Not going to go into a lot of details there because they're just modules that are not usable on this particular system. But if you add modules to Pi, which is a very modular infrastructure, you can add other functionality onto it, you can control that from there. So... As you can see, there's a whole lot of interesting things you can do with the Pi. Don't um, feel, don't, don't be afraid to get in here and start looking at things and messing with things. And heck, if you mess it up, just reload your Pi and do it again. Exactly. You know that's the beauty about the Raspberry Pi. You're going to reload that thing a billion times. So yeah. get in here and mess with things and see how things work. Um, I would also challenge you to, if you can do something in Webmin. Go figure out what the command line option is for that as well. Um, it's good to know how to get around in the command line, um, but Webmin is a very powerful tool if you want to get in there and you want to get some things configured and then, um, you know, and, and get onto your projects. Um, so, question I have for the users is: Have you already used Webmin? You know, what have you? What are you using it for? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'd love to see in the comments below. Yeah. Okay. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We definitely want to want you to subscribe and hit that notify icon so that uh, you we can get you some more videos. Yeah, sounds great. Thank um, you so much for coming with us today. And we'll see you next Tuesday.